Hello and welcome to Pharma Television News Review here at Bio Europe in Milan, Spring 2011. On this show, I have Greg Widerecht, who is Vice President of External Scientific Affairs at Merck & Co. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, Greg, you belong to the worldwide licensing group at Merck. Uh, you're, you're, you're part of the organization. Uh, obviously, you deal with uh, the externalization of, of research and development, in other words, the scientific advances that are available to Merck through your, your uh, uh, collaborations and so forth. Today in 2011, those activities, are they as strong as they were two years ago, five years ago? I think they're stronger than they were uh, five years ago. So since our merger with uh, Sharing Plow and despite our research budget of about eight and a half billion dollars, uh, externalization remains as important if not more important than ever before. After all, we have to feed a much larger company uh, with innovation. And the licensing group has actually grown in size uh, since the merger. So both Legacy Sharing Plow and Legacy Merck people make up the uh, licensing group. And the head of our licensing group is a Legacy Sharing employee. Okay, so the scientific affairs component, what is the remit? How far do you go in terms of Cap looking at a particular opportunity, do you, do you stop off at uh, phase two, or uh, where do you, how far do you, what far is your remit? So uh, our group, External Scientific Affairs, is responsible worldwide for identifying and scientifically assessing all licensing opportunities from very, very early stage and even technology. Uh, technology, basic research collaborations, preclinical candidates, all the way through the clinic and including acquisitions. So we're, we're about 84 people uh, in our group just on the find and uh, filter piece and we cover all the bases. And as you said, you're worldwide, you've got your scouts around the various parts of the world to capture those particular opportunities. So uh, you said you've expanded your group, so that, does that mean you're now looking at more opportunities than you did in the past? We're looking at even more opportunities uh, than we ever have. Over the past couple of years, we've actually looked at about uh, 7,500 uh, opportunities um, each year, which represents an uptick from before the merger. Wow. So what's important there, obviously, in the last few years, a lot of biotechnology companies have found it more difficult to, to raise money uh, and finance. Has that affected the quality of the opportunities that you see? We're finding uh, high quality opportunities. Over the last several years, we've managed to execute about uh, uh, 50 major agreements each year, so about 250 major agreements over the past uh, five years. And we, uh, there's more great stuff out there than uh, we have the resources to bring in so far. So uh, it's certainly not the outside that's rate limiting. Right. And when you're talking about, we're talking about quality, one of the things that uh, Merck has talked about is looking for first in class and best in class. Could you tell us what you mean by those two terms? Sure. First in class uh, opportunity uh, to us is an opportunity that, um, for which uh, clinical proof of concept has not yet been established and for which there's no marketed drug. And historically, Merck has been very strong uh, in the first in class area. We've got a, a legacy of uh, innovation. Uh, also, though, we want to uh, be in the best in class space. So, um, you know, historically, uh, we have not done as many follow on molecules as some of our competitors. We want to get a little stronger in that area. So, uh, that does not mean we are less interested in first in class. So, going forward, strong in first in class and stronger in follow ons, and uh, best in class is our strategy. Right. So you're quite happy to be the next product coming on the market as long as it's best in class. That's correct. So um, just going back to how your uh, part of the organization works with the remaining part of, of Merck's uh, business development function. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear about what your function is, could you describe what that is and how that fits in with other parts like where, which Barbariani is involved in? So uh, external scientific affairs is in the Merck Research Labs division of Merck and & Company. And all the scouts are uh, scientists and or medical doctors uh, by training. 
and it's their responsibility to identify opportunities. They are non-transactional. They don't do deals or get involved in the actual uh, deal. Uh, their job is to roam and patrol their territories for uh, opportunities that are aligned uh, with Merck's interests. Uh, they send them in to the external scientific affairs groups uh, at our headquarters sites, and we scientifically assess them with other subject matter experts uh, in the labs. We have an excellent cross-divisional uh, relationship with uh, Barbara Yanni's group, which is in uh, finance. And they're responsible for negotiating the terms and negotiating the uh, big deals. However, a scientist from external scientific affairs is always at the negotiating table to handle such items as the work plan or any technical issues, which there always are sure. in a contract. So a minimum deal team at Merck would be uh, a person from Barbara Yanni's group leading the negotiations, a person from our group handling the scientific issues, and a lawyer. That would be the minimum deal team. Right. And in terms of, I mean, we don't often talk about large corporations like Merck having a culture a, uh, of, you know, taking products into, into, into Merck. Has that culture changed, I mean, genuinely changed in, its, in Merck's ability, adaptability, to take on products from outside or opportunities from outside? Well, that's a very good uh, question. So uh, over the, I think I would say 10 or 15 years ago, outsiders might have perceived us as being a little bit insular. Uh, but there has been a huge cultural change that came all the way down from the top of the organization. And everyone is very excited about uh, uh, going to the outside to get opportunities. And we've set up our reward system so that irrespective of whether you're working at the bench and you're delivering a molecule or you're spending your time looking outside for items in your area of expertise, there are equal rewards irrespective of whether um, the molecule comes from your bench or from the outside. The point is to bring in the best molecule and uh, take it forward. And even in the last three years, has that changed still? Is that, is that, have you improved even over the I last years? I think so, yeah, I think so. There's uh, 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 any holdouts for uh, doing everything internally have pretty much been eliminated and uh, everybody's interested in, uh, and excited about externalization, particularly in the, uh, you know, in, the, in the sourcing area. There's been a, uh, uh, an awful lot of uh, sourcing from the outside from some of the uh, uh, big chemistry providers such as Woozy and uh, others of their peers. And we will actually, um, there may be uh, targets we're very interested in doing internally, uh, but we don't have the uh, resources to do. We'll externalize the whole thing among various sourcing providers. I don't consider that licensing, but it's a good example of the trend toward externalization. So both licensing and a lot more sourcing. Sure. And just finally, in terms of decision to acquire versus to license, how is that made? It's made about what makes economic sense. Yeah. Simple as that. Yep. <laughs> Greg, thank you very much indeed for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting me.